Do we even need ETL tools for business intelligence anymore? What do modern ETL tools actually look like, and how have they evolved and adapted to deal with the modern business data landscape? Let's take a look. Hello and welcome to Learn BI Online, helping you do more with data. So the question of whether we still need ETL tools for BI is kind of a loaded one because we already know the answer. Of course we do. But they have evolved over recent years and might not look how you expect them to for reasons that we'll get into in this video. I'll also be showing you a modern ETL tool in action, so make sure you stick around for that. First, in case you don't know what an ETL tool is, ETL stands for Extract, Transform and Load. Their job, as the name suggests, is to extract data from different sources, apply transformations, and then load them into a different destination. Well, actually, it doesn't even need to be a different destination. The data can be loaded back where it came from if that's what's needed. Anyway, for BI, the main idea is that ETL tools access data from lots of different sources, both on-premise and in the cloud, and then bring them together in one place, often a data warehouse, that serves the data analysis and business intelligence needs of a company. It's one of the main challenges of BI in that data is everywhere, especially in today's modern business environment where companies are moving ever more online. Let's take a look at the modern business data landscape so you can get a picture of what I'm talking about. Here's a slide from my BI Career Starter Program, link in the description. Basically, when ETL tools first started to become more mainstream in the 1990s, before the internet age really kicked off, the business data landscape kind of looked like this. Data was stored on-premise in relational SQL databases, MySQL, SQL Server, Postgre, and Microsoft Access. Then businesses also had data in Excel spreadsheets and CSV text files. So it made sense that ETL tools were on-premise as well, installed in-house within the business's data infrastructure. But as the internet grew and the cloud became a thing, the modern business data landscape began to change, and change fairly rapidly. Now you've got spreadsheet data in Google Sheets and cloud-based versions of relational databases in places like Google Cloud Platform, Amazon Web Services, and Microsoft Azure, all accessible anytime from anywhere. But that was just part of the oncoming data tsunami. More businesses started to build websites, giving rise to web traffic data in tools like Google Analytics. These websites need to be optimized for web searches, so you have Search Console data to analyze. Need to advertise online? You've got Google Ads, Bing Ads, Facebook Ads, and loads of other platforms available where you can reach your target audience. Oh, and you also need to have a presence on these social media platforms as well and analyze your organic reach. Most businesses also use some kind of email marketing tool like MailChimp, have accounting software like QuickBooks, and a CRM like Salesforce or HubSpot. If they sell stuff online, they might have something like Shopify. And you'll also need to use a payment gateway or two like PayPal and Stripe. All of this data needs to be analyzed to see how a business is performing globally. But to analyze it properly, all of this data needs to be in the same place so that it can be merged and joined and blended. So you can understand how and why ETL tools needed to evolve to cope with this new data landscape. So these cloud SaaS data sources are all accessed via their API, a kind of data switchboard that accepts outside calls asking for specific data and then sends back the results without the thing making the calls ever getting direct access to the raw data itself. Now, because all of these APIs tend to be built in very similar ways, using the same kinds of architecture and programming languages, it makes creating what are called connectors to them fairly straightforward. It's how BI tools are able to offer an a la carte menu of different data sources. But what this means is that the functionalities of traditional ETL tools become less important and necessary. Sure, they could build and incorporate these connectors too, but so can anyone else with a few dozen lines of code. But there are also other important reasons why traditional ETL tools are less necessary. It has to do with the T part of ETL. The two principal reasons you might need to apply transformations to your data once it's been extracted are 
One, to normalize the format of the data in the different sources, and two, to clean the data. In terms of the first reason, the data most APIs return is usually in one of two different formats, XML or JSON. The task of turning this semi-structured data into structured data isn't that hard, so you don't necessarily need an ETL tool for that. And when it comes to unclean data, the two main reasons this occurs are corruption during data transfer and human error. The API method for extracting data is fairly simple and robust. You're also talking directly to the horse's mouth, as it were, with no intermediary steps where data could get corrupted. And as far as human error goes, this is actually very rare, because these SaaS cloud data sources are, for the most part, what's called pre-mapped, meaning all the metrics, dimensions, and a lot of the dimension values are always the same in every account. There's much less manual data entry going on. With this being the case, you can see that there's far less need for traditional ETL tools, which is the main reason for the huge growth in what are called data hubs. They aren't ETL tools, they're what you might call EL tools. They offer a bunch of different data source connectors, like BI tools, but unlike BI tools, this data can then be loaded into a bunch of different destinations. They are BI tool agnostic, as it were. And what these data hubs also offer is the option to backfill data. So whereas a lot of BI tools make calls to APIs on a query by query basis to build visualizations, data hubs allow you to access all data for say a couple of years, bring all of that into a table in a database or data warehouse and work with it there, apply transformations and blend it with other data sources you've also extracted. It can also be blended with data you might have in other databases because, after all, it's all structured data in the same place. And your job as a BI analyst is far simpler. So let's take a look at a modern data hub in action, Windsor.ai, who are very kindly sponsoring today's video. Their tagline is connecting all marketing data, but the data sources available go beyond marketing. For example, you've got things like Salesforce, Shopify, Zendesk, and Zoho. Let's take a look at how we go about extracting and loading data. So you first choose your data source from here and go through the process of authorizing your account. Once it's done the first time, the connection remains available in your account for future use. You can see here that I've already connected to Google Ads, Twitter, YouTube, and Google Analytics. The next step is to design your data extract. All of the dimensions and metrics for all the various data sources you've connected are available to choose from, or you can filter by data source. So for example, you could add the number of impressions, clicks, and ad spend from both Google Ads and Facebook Ads to get an overall click-through rate and spend. You also choose the date range you want and any filters you wish to apply to the output. As you place the fields you want into the extract configurator, you'll get a preview of what the data will look like in a structured format, as well as the API call that's being made from the Windsor app. Let me show you what happens when I copy and paste this call into a new browser window. You can see that data is being returned in JSON format. So you could potentially integrate this data into a custom built application. Okay, so we've configured our export. The next step is to choose where we want this data to be loaded. You can see from the list you've got a range of BI tools and SQL-based storage. Let's choose BigQuery. You'll need to fill in all of this information related to the cloud storage bucket, folder, and dataset where you'd like the data to be sent. Create an extract schedule and backfill data for up to two years. It really is that simple. If we go into BigQuery, we can see the table has been created that contains the data. You're then free to join or union this table to any other tables you have in your BigQuery account. If you're unfamiliar with Google Cloud Platform, you can click on the banner up here or follow the link in the description for a quick tutorial. You see, no transformations were necessary, which means no need for an ETL tool. The Data Hub does everything you need it to. So this does beg the question, do we still need ETL tools for BI? Well, yes, for larger enterprises where data governance means that there are strict limits on what data can be accessible via the web. Where data needs to be accessed internally, it makes sense to have ETL tools internally as well. Also, where data might be coming from sources that don't have an API, you might need to find some alternative method for automating the ETL of the data. 
My point really is that ETL tools are becoming less necessary, not extinct. It's EL tools like data hubs that have really grown to fill the need for accessing data in all of its cloud silos. If you're unfamiliar with the term silo, check out this video where I talk about that plus six other BI terms everyone should know. See you in there. Bye.